What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Slackers, bringing you guys our next matchup in the upgraded tournament. I'm in a good mood. I've been work. I got like this whole week off, so I've been working on something. It's like the this video that I'm working on. I'm hoping to have it out next Monday. You'll see it then. It'll be a second video, but uh, uh, I think it's the most work I've been put into any video ever. So I'm very excited for once it comes out, but that's probably next Monday. But uh, before that, we got some business to take care of with the upgraded tournament, and uh, yeah, this should be fun, right? Uh, if you're new and you're wondering what this is, first and foremost, 48 characters are put into a tournament with this thing, and then uh, each day on the channel, except Sundays, I upload one of the matches from the tournament. How the matches work? We vote between one of the two characters that are in the match for the day. How do you vote? That's all part of the rules. It's very simple and very easy to follow along with, but there are rules for a reason. So, here they are. Alright, rule number one, you gotta be a little open-minded for this tournament. Why do you have to be open-minded? Well, you gotta be open-minded to the possibility we could have another upgraded character in Smash Bros. DLC in the Fighter's Pass. Like Min Min was, she was upgraded. So, is there a chance we could get another one? Yeah, maybe. Not a guarantee, but maybe. So, you gotta be open-minded. Next rule, you only get one vote per person. Alright? But, keep in mind... Um, the, the way to vote is simple. It's just down in the comment section. Type the name of the character you're voting for. For example, I vote for, insert your character name here. That's how you vote. Simple. If you do like both characters, however, yes, you can vote for both characters. Simply type the word both or I vote for both. Simple. Uh, rest of the rules. This is a double elimination tournament, meaning the character has to lose two times overall before being officially eliminated from the tournament. Then once we get to the results to determine the winner and loser of each individual match, if there happens to be a tie in the votes, we're going to flip the coin on camera, fairest way to break a tie. And each matchup voting wise only lasts for just one week. Those are the rules. Let's get to the West of the video. All right, let's quickly run over the results from last week and the matchup from last week. I forgot. <laughs> ah, every, this was like everybody's favorite matchup. It was Fire Emblem versus Gen 1 Pokemon. Black Knight versus Gengar. A lot of people are like, oh boy, do I vote for another Fire Emblem Sword character? Oh boy, that's everybody's thing. Or do we get another Pokemon from Gen 1? All right. It just happened to fall that way. I'm sorry. It wasn't everybody's favorite match, but look, we get matches like that in the tournament. Anyway, moving on. The results. Who ended up winning? Who lost? Uh, where are we at? Aha. Gengar ended up defeating Black Knight 29 votes to 20. Congrats to Black Knight. <laughs> Wrong character. Congrats to Gengar. Moving on to the next round. Unfortunately, Black Knight has been eliminated. So Black Knight is done from the tournament. Gengar moves on to face yet another knight. But this time the knight has a shovel. That'll be the next round. I believe that comes up next week for the match. But uh, speaking... Wait, let me, let me check. What, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Yeah, that'll be on Monday next week, actually. <laughs> Talking about Monday all over the place. So uh, let's just get to the uh, matchup for the day. This one will be interesting because it's not really two characters... It have a lot of hype going for him. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this one plays out. We have Midna from the Legend of Zelda series taking on Goemon. I guess another Konami, Konami rep, I should say. So, uh, we'll start things off. So, Goemon. Now, uh, he's an interesting character in terms of <laughs> what has he done lately, right? Now, no, 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 hold on, hold on. It's not to say that, like, because I, I hate when... I don't like the argument of relevancy for Smash Bros, right? Uh, now, I don't follow the mystical or mythical ninja starring going... I don't follow his series. So, maybe there was a remake or reboot recently. I really don't think there was. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Somebody let me know. But uh, if there wasn't, somebody might bring up the uh, argument of relevancy. Now, that's... I think it's been proven time and time again, especially... The current Smash Bros. game, Smash Ultimate, that we have, that we play right now. All, tons of newcomers that we've gotten. Relevancy hasn't mean jack, right? So, throw relevancy out the window. So, going on. Maybe he hasn't done anything. Who cares? What can he do, though? That's what we gotta ask ourselves. Not like, when's the last time anybody even mentioned this character? No, no, no. Let's, let's look at the character for what they can bring. That's the fun part about this, right? So, Goemon. Now, um, I kind of think... Uh, 
Ness. That's what I was thinking of. Ness would be a great base character model to work Goemon off of. Now, Goemon does have a Mii costume in Smash Ultimate. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. People like that. I believe, didn't he come back? I think his Mii costume came out with Terry, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe earlier, maybe later. But I believe it was uh, when Terry was released. So, Goemon. So, why, why, why do I bring up, uh, hello. <laughs> Why do I bring up Ness as his base model? Now, Ness makes sense for quite a few reasons. So, Ness has a home run bat for, well, we know his forward smash. Now, Goemon has this, like, pipe chain. Pretty much same shape as a bat, pretty much. Just long stick, right? You could use that, just change the texture of it. It's no longer home run bat. It's got, it's this, now, chain pipe. Cool, you can use it the same way as a home run bat. Maybe a home run swing. Maybe alter the animation a little bit. Whatever it might be. You can use that. I believe Goemon also has access to a yo-yo. Ness has a yo-yo as well. Maybe you want to use that. Something like that. You, you got some assets from Ness that you can use for Goemon. Now, I'm not saying it's a complete copy-paste to be like, all right, Goemon's just another Ness. No, he's not. He's not. Trust me. Goemon's so much different. And uh, it, the weird thing for Goemon would be, at least for me, is he's coming from Konami. Now... We know Konami might not play... I can't even say they might not play fair. Uh, that's not the right way to put this. Uh, they, maybe they're not willing to... Uh, I don't know. Like, Are they are they willing to let Nintendo use any more of their characters? I mean, they let Nintendo get the uh, Mi costume. So maybe Konami and Nintendo are still on good terms. And if all it takes is Nintendo to pick up a phone and go, Yo, Konami... Um, we kind of want to put Goemon and Smash Bros. as a playable character. We cool? Can we work something out? And I think Konami would be game for that to happen, right? They're like, we got Snake back. That was, I, I, Snake was one of the few characters, if I remember correctly, which uh, was causing problems for the Smash Ultimate Everyone Is Here, right? Along with Cloud. That was, I think those were the big two. But um, we ended up getting Snake. Didn't get Bomberman. But then we got Simon and Richter. So Konami already has three different reps. Two different series. But what if Konami as that company were to be the first company to get three different franchises represented on the playable roster for Smash Bros? That would be a big accomplishment, for one. Uh, I think that would throw off a lot of people, shock a lot of people, right? Like, Konami was the one? And if it didn't happen to be Bomberman, I think that would even be more surprising. So... Especially if he's Goemon. Like, he's just kind of one of those characters, kind of like the uh, matchup yesterday. It's just kind of a character that's just, like, just kind of sitting there, right? Not, not a lot of people making waves. And not a lot of people talking about it. It's not like, hey, we want Goemon and Smash. There's not really any of those people around. So maybe the fan base is content with his me costume, and they're going to leave it at that. Maybe, And that's fine. If that's how it works, that's how it works. But, uh, yeah, it's just kind of a... I think it's just kind of a... I don't want to say an odd in a disrespectful way, but it's kind of a... It would be like an odd pick in terms of DLC. But then again, for DLC cycle, you got to kind of go... You're going to have like your ups with your like huge reveals. And then you're going to have down reveals. And again, down reveals are always dependent on your particular feelings towards the character, right? For me, the first fighter pass... Let me be completely honest. I know this has nothing to do with Midna. I'll get to Midna in a second. But for me personally, fighter pass 1... If it wasn't for Banjo, at the beginning for the reveals, once they reveal Joker, I I don't play Persona, so I was like, eh, okay, four more characters. Hero got revealed. So, eh, I don't play Dragon Quest, whatever. Banjo, Banjo made the entire Fighters Pass for me. Terry Bogard, at the time Terry was like a, eh, whatever. And then Byleth came along and is like, another Fire Emblem character. But... Over time, I've come to learn to play the characters before judging them. I don't play Joker at all. I, I guess I just don't like the play style. Hero's grown on me quite a bit. Terry's been growing on me quite a bit lately. And uh, Byleth, I just, Byleth's got a fun uh, play style. So, uh, yeah, ups and downs of the Fighters Pass. You're going to have really big reveals. You're going to have small reveals. So maybe that's where Goemon could kind of fit one of those smaller type roles. Or Midna can also fit that. Not, I didn't mean that like character-wise small reveal, but you know one of the smaller characters that makes room for to for Nintendo to acquire one of those bigger ones. Because again, we're gonna have to 
factor in Nintendo is going to give Sakurai and his team a budget for Smash Ultimate uh, Fighter Pass Volume 2, right? You can spend this much maybe per character, or here's what you have to spend on the entire thing. Use it wisely. So, I don't know. Maybe Midna is kind of, I don't want to say an afterthought, but maybe Midna's one of those sleeper characters. That's a good way to put it. Midna could be a sleeper type character. And plus, if Midna would be able to, I don't know, transform into Wolf Link, or maybe that could be the gimmick for the character, right? DLC characters seem to have some sort of gimmick, so Midna and Wolf Link. I don't know, that could, that could be something there. That could be kind of fun, right? But I think the biggest thing is Midna is from Legend of Zelda. Duh. The, the big thing is Legend of Zelda for how big, and I say this, every LOZ character that's in any of these tournaments, how do we still only essentially have is it three characters, right? Link, Zelda Sheik, Ganondorf. You essentially have three characters, but if you want to really separate Zelda and Sheik into their own character, okay, four characters. Then we have two more Links that are just somewhere on the roster, right? Like, no, no more Links. We don't need nothing. Give me somebody different that we obviously don't have another carnation of, carnation, flower, and a different uh, incarnation, right? Is that what I'm looking for? No. Just a... Somebody who's not already on the roster in a different art style. All right, Midna fits perfectly. Brand new character. Does if if we talk topic about Midna, about Legend of Zelda in particular, and you say Legend of Zelda needs a new character, right? All right, Midna's on that list. Tingles up there. Jirium, Gahirium. I still don't know how to pronounce his name. He's an assist trophy. Skull Kid's always up there. I mean, there's definite characters that stand out. To a lot of a uh, lot of people, it's like, all right, come on, this is Legend of Zelda, arguably Nintendo's second, nah, third, top three biggest franchise, and yet we still only have technically what three playable characters, three different characters. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. Okay, four, I'll give you four, but it, come on, Pokemon's got what eight? Fire Emblem has like a thousand. Legend of Zelda four. Come on, what's that just seems wrong, doesn't it? On the premise of that, uh, and especially, I'm not the biggest fan of going on by any means, so I didn't even really talk moveset for either one of them. Well, kind of going on a little bit, but if you know the character, you know who you're going to vote for. So just the premise that Legend of Zelda deserves another new face on the roster. Midna's going to get my vote in this one. So let me know who you guys got down in the comments. Midna, going on, or both. All good options. That is it for this one. So uh, sneak peek for tomorrow. The uh, matchup for tomorrow. I think this is going to be a good one. I can't wait to see how people uh, go for this one. Another Gen 1 Pokemon, but it's Eevee. Lots of people love Eevee. Even people that's uh, like, it was even in Eevee's last match. We don't need no more Pokemon, but I would take Eevee, right? People love Eevee, right? But Eevee's opponent, Akira Officer Howard from Astral Chain. That could... I don't know if it's a sleeper pick. We did get the, the, the spirits already earlier this year from Astral Chain, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying maybe it's a sleeper pick. Maybe Nintendo, you know, reverses things around, right? I, I, whatever. We'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. But the uh, results for tomorrow are going to be from Ashley, who is taking on Ribbon Girl. That is it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully I catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.